Kevin Maynell from the Internet Society. Um, so firstly, again, apologies that this is going to be in English, not in uh, Russian. Um, it was also going to be on Let's Encrypt, but also how we've used Let's Encrypt uh, in, in um, a Dane implementation. Um, I've been asked to cut this short by 10 minutes, so it may be just Let's Encrypt now, but let's see how the time goes. But uh, I will give you some references to the things that we did, and you can follow that uh, if you're interested at the end of the presentation. Um, just a disclaimer, so I don't work for Let's Encrypt, but the Internet Society does sponsor, um, does sponsor the initiative. Uh, some of these slides were contributed by Let's Encrypt and also my colleague Jan Zorj, uh, and thanks also to uh, Victor Tukovny, um, who helped us a lot with the Dane experiments. So, yeah, what is Let's Encrypt? Well, the aim of this is to be, to, to, to set up a free uh, automated and open certificate authority. Um, and the sort of aim is to really to, to encourage and simplify the adoption of transport layer security or TLS or SSL as some of you may know it. Um, and with the aim to advance CA and just general end user security um, on the internet. So the idea is, is that certificates um, that will be issued from this CA uh, will be free to anybody who owns the domain name. Um, but the important key point is that uh, it will be allowed, you will be, will be able to run software on a web server um, that can automatically, automatically obtain, um, configure, and renew uh, the certificates when you, when you order them. Um, so the, the, the issuance and renewal protocol is actually um, published and is becoming or is in the process of becoming an IETF standard, uh, which can be adopted by others. So this is not a closed system. You c others can write clients for this uh, uh, platform. Um, and it's really a community-led effort to, to benefit um, the internet um, that, that's not really within the control of one organization. Um, so why, why is this needed? Well, the internet is you know, inherently insecure. Um, it's quite common to have unencrypted traffic. Uh, and that obviously can be read and modified um, on the wire, amongst other places. Um, obviously, TLS is an, is an initiative or an attempt to uh, encrypt web communications in particular. Um, but it's also used as well for other applications, particularly e email, um, instant messaging, and, and uh, things like uh, streaming. Um, sort of current statistics are that 40% of um, Firefox page loads are via HTTPS, so the encrypted protocol. Uh, and about 62% of emails received uh, by Gmail uh, are over start TLS, so they're already encrypted. But really, Let's Encrypt is there to, uh, with the aim that to get 100% of internet traffic encrypted, and to do this by default, not as an afterthought. Now how, do you, how do you implement encryption? Well, primarily the, the primary method at the moment is using public CAs, um, which validate domains um, and link to public keys, which are used to establish the encrypted connections. Um, but actually, this is not as easy as it seems. Um, so you need to order a X509 certificate. Um, most people are co maybe familiar with this through, through the web, for the web. Um, but actually, going through the ordering process and the issuance process isn't always entirely straightforward. And I think that the sort of initiative started out from this, um, <laughs> this statement from a a well-known Cisco fellow um, about the difficulties. And I must say I have some sympathies with this. Um, I actually ran or set up two quite large CAs uh, in Europe. And actually, when I first came to this, it was all like a sort of jargon to me. And, and I, I did sort of think, well, what's the CSR? And well, how do I fill this in? And even now, I, I don't order that many certificates, but I do have to occasionally. And I come back, and I'm sort of going, you know, well, what's the organizational subunit and, and all of this type of stuff? So. It does take a little bit of thinking about. So the kind of process, traditional process, is you know, once you've decided that you even need a certificate in the first place, um, you've kind of got to work out, well, which, which CA do I get this from? Um, and then what type of certificate should I, should I have? I mean, there's the DV, domain validation, organizational validation, extended validation. 
uh, which is kind of obfuscated in some, res in, in some places with all kinds of other uh, marketing names. Um, and it becomes quite a, a confusing process sometimes. But once you've kind of decided what certificate you want, you then really got to go through this CSR process. Um, quite often there's a manual verification process. And particularly with the OV and the EV certificates, there's a lot of other steps to go through, like you need to supply your DUNS number and, you know, Quite honestly, who knows actually what a Dunn's number is? In case you're interested, it's the Dunn and Bradstreet company number that, that is uh, used to register companies around the world. But actually, I didn't know that, and I had to go and find that out myself. And I then found out that, you know, exactly what it is, but it was a process. And then once you've, once you've paid for your certificate, ordered your certificate, paid for your certificate, and then you've worked out how to install your certificate, well let's hope you can remember to renew it when it expires as well, because you don't always get notification of that. So Let's Encrypt, as I've mentioned, it's here to uh, really to try to simplify this process, um, but also to make this, not only to simplify the process, but to also make this, to put very few barriers in the way of actually ordering a certificate or to use a certificate. So the idea is, is that the CA will be established, to establish a CA, uh, that would offer free certificates, but also support automated processes. So actually, it will only support automated processes. You can't do this manually. You have to do this through an automated process. Um, and this is funded at the moment by around 30 sponsors who've made long-term commitments to, to funding this. But from the end user uh, perspective, uh, the, certificate, the, the certificates are free. Um, so this was announced in November 2004. There was a trial. The trial started in two, uh, September 2005, the end of last year. Went public uh, last month of last year um, and entered production service uh, actually just about one month ago. So as I sort of mentioned, the, the, the big difference between this CA and some others are, um, is what we call the Automated Certificate Management uh, Environment, or ACME. And this is an API for requesting, validating, and um, otherwise managing uh, certificates. So you have a client uh, on your machine or on your server uh, which can, can interface with this API and request certificates from Less Encrypt. Um, there is a pre-supplied client called CertBot. Uh, this has actually just been moved to the electronic, um, sorry, EFF. Um, but there are other uh, clients that, that are available uh, and can be used. And you can also write one as well. Um, so yeah, Acme has been standardized in the IETF. I'm not quite sure if that's actually finalized yet, but it must be getting pretty close. Um, but it will be a, a published uh, a standard. Okay, so the technical information. Um, let's encrypt a DV certificates, um, so which basically assert that the, uh, the holder of a domain has control over that domain. Um, and the validation process is, is undertaken through, well, there's three or four separate ways. Um, one, for example, is putting a file on your, on your web server. Uh, you can also provision a virtual host um, at your domain's IP address. And uh, there's other ways, like putting a text record in, in, the, um, in the DNS for your domain. Um, but one interesting difference from a lot of uh, traditional CAs is that the certificates only have a 90-day lifetime, so very short. Um, and the, aim, the idea behind this is to encourage automation, um, but also to limit damage from any key compromise or misissuance. So one of the significant problems that we've had with CAs, traditional CAs, is that they, well, they have, they're able to issue um, a, a certificate for any domain. So it's not, even, not necessarily even one under your control. And there have been some incidents of hacking or just simple mistakes, and domains have been issued in the name of Google or Microsoft to an organization that shouldn't have these certificates. Um, and this has actually caused a bit of a problem. Um, you can revoke certificates, but again, that can be a bit hit and miss as well. Um, it relies on certificate revocation lists and um, other, um, like OSCP, which is, can, be, can be problematic in some cases. So having a shorter lifetime, the idea is the certificate will time out possibly pretty quickly, um, and, and that removes some of the, the, the problem. 
Okay, the trust anchor, this is the all important thing. So end entity certificates are validated for a chain of trust um, which originate from a root certificate known as a trust anchor. Um, root certificate trust is, is established through, usually established through distribution of root certificates for operating systems or browsers and the three big programs are Microsoft, Apple and Mozilla. So if you want to be a trusted root, you, you have to get in, usually have to get into one of these programs. Um, there's a process involved, certain technical requirements to meet and you need to go through an audit process. Um, but once you're in those programs, generally your certificate will be trusted um, globally. Um, Let's Encrypt actually is issuing certificates from an intermediate CA, uh, um, which is signed by its own root CA. So the plan is that Let's Encrypt will have its own, will be its own root CA that will be in the, uh, the, trusted, dis uh, the, the trusted distributions. Um, but this takes, quite, this takes quite a long time. It's, it's sort of between two and five years to get propagated across the internet. So uh, in the meantime, it's been signed by an existing um, root CA trust ident, uh, which is cross-signing its certificate. So it will be trusted um, um, in, in all the major browsers and, and operating systems. Okay, so yeah, how, how successful has this been? Well, in let's say uh, the launch since, well, the public launch was in December last year. Uh, they've issued nearly two million certificates, so it's pretty significant and there's been a pretty large uptake. So you know, it's gone quite a long way to uh, encouraging the adoption of um, um, uh, encryption. Um, if you look at the, the sort of use of of HTTPS on, on Firefox page loads, you can see there's been, um, uh, since the uh, launch of Let's Encrypt, there's been you know, a, a noticeable up, uptake in, in, um, in, in use of TLS. Um, so it does seem to indicate that uh, it's been a, a, an encouraging initiative. Okay, so how am I doing for time? Okay. We might be able to do a little bit of the Dane stuff then. Uh, right, so um, obviously when people talk about encrypted connections, they often or usually think about the web, and it's pretty obvious on the web. You can click on the, on the padlock in the browser, um, and if it's green or if it's blue, you have an encrypted connection. So you can visibly see that as a user. But you can also, uh, in encryption on the internet is not just, uh, it's not just the web. Um, so we wanted to, at ISOC, and in combination with my colleague Jan Zorj, who runs the Go6 lab, uh, we wanted to have a look at um, you know, who is actually using, you know, or how many, you know, with email, how many um, email servers can, can, um, uh, can, can send encrypted, uh, uh, or can send mail encrypted. Uh, so we tested um, the top one million Alexa.com domain names um, and found that 70% of attempted sessions could be encrypted with TLS. Um, and 60% of those sessions were established with a trusted certificate. Um, so it does seem to indicate that, uh, yeah, you know, there's quite a, we can go quite a long way to, um, to using encryption for other protocols as well, and particularly email. Um, but perhaps the concerning thing was we actually tried with um, Dane as well, but only 128 sites um, out of that one million could actually be verified um, using Dane. Um, so this is kind of one area that we're trying to improve um, significantly. So what is Dane? Um, well, DNS authenticated name entities. Um, these allow certificates to be cryptographically bound to DNS names. Um, and this essentially allows domain administrators to certify the keys um, that are used for establishing TLS sessions. And they can do that by storing these in, in, in actually in the DNS. So we're trying to get away from the situation where any CA can issue any certificate for any domain name. Um, we want domain administrators to be able to assert um, their own DNS records um, uh, and, the, and their own uh, certificates um, using the DNS system. Um, this does require DNS to be signed um, with DNSSEC, um, and also clients need to be DNSSEC and Dane aware. Um, but it is a it is it is a a, a, a potential uh, improvement on um, the existing system, the existing CA system. 
So this is done through what we call D uh, DNS TLSA records, um, which associate certificates and public keys with the domains. Um, and there are a number of different types of these records. Um, this is actually specified in the RFC, um, but it, it's basically linked to, um, there's a certain usage type, selection type, matching types, um, and this determines the type of record that goes into the DNS. Um, Let's Encrypt recommends what they call 211 or 311 records. I, if I've got time, I'll explain that in a little bit more depth. Um, but it's important to, to, um, to note that uh, some, some of the types of records are not currently supported by, by Let's Encrypt for various reasons. Okay, I'll, I'll skip over that one in the interest of time. Um, the important challenge, though, with, with trying to use let so we were trying to use Let's Encrypt certificates with Dane and just see how that works, see if we could do this. Um, and the interesting challenge with Let's Encrypt is there's only a validity of 90 days. So every time the certificate changes, you've got to change some of the records. Uh, and this becomes a little, this means there's a little bit of work. Um, but we did find a way around this um, by, by um, using different record types and using two types of record. Um, whether this sort of satisfies the, the condition that we want to automate this, or, or this is a, to simplify the automation process, I, I'm not sure, but it does show that it can be done if necessary, and uh, you can do this without things breaking, so you can renew your certificate um, without breaking. Okay, I, I won't go through this whole slide because it's in the interest of time. Um, I think these slides are all available, but this process is described quite fully um, on, on our website, which I'll give you some links to, and you can follow this through step by step if necessary. So, um, the moral of the story. Um, okay, you can encrypt email, um, so please enable TLS on your server. Um, there's no, now, now no excuse not to be using um, TLS because you can get free certificates uh, from Let's Encrypt. That process of ordering an installation can be automated and you can run that in the background. Um, so really, please, let's try to make encryption the default on the internet. Dane does take a little bit more thinking about, but again, we would encourage you to look into that and try to um, implement that uh, as well, um, because that also provides some uh, added, added trust anchors to, um, to the certificate system. But all this relies on DNSSEC, um, so we need more DNSSEC signed domains. Um, if your zone isn't DNSSEC signed, then again, please look into that, consider doing that. Um, and again, please also look at uh, rolling out uh, Dane as well. Uh, that's my last slide. Uh, more information on DNSSEC can be found on our Deploy360 website. If you're interested in Let's Encrypt, that's the link for that. But then perhaps the, the, um, the, 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 the um, thing that I didn't have time to, to go through, but there's a how-to on how to go for how we, how we deployed Dane on, on, the mail, on our mail servers. Um, and there's a step-by-step -step process there that you can follow through in, two, in a two-part blog. Um, so that's it. Kevin, thank you very much for your very promising presentation. I have a little comment that um, doing DNSSEC automation is now also or quite simple. Uh, for example, we are open DNSSEC uh, or other similar projects, so yes, we should push it harder. I guess I better speak, uh, ask the question in Russian. One of the ways to confirm that you are the owner of this server is uh, to confirm through DNS. Why into those scripts that uh, Let's Encrypt checks? So immediately add from the start resource records into DNS with this new certificate. Would it be possible? This, says, this is a suggestion about Let's Encrypt. Those scripts, along with the notification of the user that add those lines, uh, when uh, there is confirmation via DNS, you could just take and automatically add them. Uh, 
Um, there, there are some, there are scripts to do this. Uh, yeah, so um, I would say they're a little bit experimental at the moment. Um, but yes, it can be done through an automated script process, which have, we, we do have uh, or have been produced. Um, I think it's still quite early days, but yes, that, that we've proved the concept of doing that. Hi, I have a question. Uh, first of all, you, you, uh, you said that around maybe 200 uh, servers uh, are accept in the world accepting uh, mail and they are secured with, with the certificates. Uh, you know, uh, I think there is no, not, not, not enough drivers to implement DEIN even with like uh, half million of sign DNS uh, sex signed domains in ComZone, for example or even uh, bigger, uh, bigger, better pre penetration uh, in the new G GTLDs. Uh, secure mail is not an option, not a driver for uh, running uh, the, the in records, and uh, especially with, with the uh, DNS automation. Do you think there would be something that would be a bigger driver? Of course, web. Sorry? Web. I mean, one thing we, we were trying to do, so the web is obviously the, the major interest, um, I guess, and that's the sort of visible thing that, that, that we're trying, that Let's Encrypt certainly is trying to push, but we're also considering the other sort of protocols, perhaps the ones that, that are not sort of, the user doesn't see directly, um, which also need to be thought about in terms of um, encryption as well. Uh, another thing, uh, I did a presentation on the, uh, DNSSEC uh, statistics in the top top zones like uh, .com, .net, .org, uh, some new GTLDs, and uh, as a part of presentation, I made a conclusion that then can be, uh, let's encrypt can can be a well a killer application uh, for for Dane. Yeah, I mean, um, well, we hope so. <laughs> Agree. Thanks. Thank you again. So I would like to ask in Russian, you were talking that, that they had tests. And so I just, uh, you know, went through the wind and I saw that so, uh, I saw that the realization for the user agent for the mail client today, there is no single user agent that they can do it. There are mail servers like post eczema that uh, do some that, that perform some draft, but uh, which I understand is not yet uh, approved uh, standard. What, what, what mail agent did you use to check your agent? So how can it be done in practice? Okay, so the mail agent was uh, post-fix. I forget the version. That actually, oh, it's not on the slide, but in the how-to, there's a, uh, the, the, the version of post-fix that we used for that. Uh, so, uh, currently it is not about client-server connection, but uh, between uh, MTAs. Um, well, the, 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 the postfix can, uh, can do the authentication. Uh, uh, it's, they're a separate script for putting the actual records into the DNS. Yeah. 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 So, okay. uh, it's not uh, about MUA to MTA speaking now. Um, sorry, I'm not sure I understand. The uh, it's not about uh, Dane checking uh, within users' mail client. Okay, so currently there are no. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you again. All right.